for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that, with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book, first book of Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God said, ask something of me and I will give it to you. Solomon answered, O Lord, my God, you have made me your servant, king to succeed my father, David. But I am a mere youth, not knowing at all how to act. I serve you in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a people so vast that it cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. For who is able to govern this vast people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon made this request. So God said to him, because you have asked for this, not for a long life for yourself, nor for riches, nor for the life of your enemies, but for understanding so that you may know what is right, I do as you requested. I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there has never been anyone like you up to now. And after you, there will come no one to equal you. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. Lord, I love your commands. I have said, O oh Lord, that is my part, is to keep your words. The law of your mouth is to me more precious than thousands of gold and silver pieces. Lord, I love your commands. Let your kindness comfort me according to your promise to your servants. Let your compassion Come to me that I may live, for your law is my delight. Lord, I love your commands. For I love your commands more than gold, however fine. For in all your precepts I go forward. Every false way I hate. Lord, I love your commands. Wonderful are your decrees. Therefore, I observe them. The revelation of your words sheds light, giving understanding to the simple. Lord, I love your commands. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all things work for good for those who love God who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be comforted, to, the, to be conformed to the image of his son, so that he might be the firstborn 
among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field, which a person finds and hides again, and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Our parable today allows us to very easily imagine ourselves in the position of possibly buying this field, possibly selling all of our possessions to buy this valuable pearl. And I suppose it's in a moment like this that we realize whether we have optimistic or pessimistic tendencies. Depending on your personality, the parable of the treasure is bound to that sense that one might optimistically think the treasure could be mine the glass is half full. Or to look at from the standpoint that, you know, by the time I get there, it's going to be gone. The glass is half empty. The treasure indeed is costly, will require the sale of all of one's possessions to purchase. And so does one go all out, go all in rather, selling all they have when there is no guarantee the treasure will be there when they return. Two things to consider. First, there is a little bit of room for us to consider what the treasure actually is. Gold, silver, jewels, coins come to mind when we think of treasures, and yet there are many things in life we treasure that cannot be measured in terms of silver and gold. While the scripture seems to indicate, with the pearl of great price, that it is a treasure in a classic sense, it's worthwhile to consider that the owner of the field may be aware of its existence but doesn't consider it anything of, val of value. Isn't this true about our church and the gifts of the sacrament that God has given us? Available for all to attain, valued by some but not by all, requiring all of our commitment in order to own it. Another way to consider the treasure, again in a classic sense of being a treasure, is will its loss be costly to the one who justly owns it? Is the original owner of the treasure aware of the loss? Would the owner be angry or want the treasure back if he or she discovered the loss? These two considerations, possibly, maybe, how should we behold the treasure? Well, if we consider that the treasure is Jesus himself, sown into a field intended by the Father for him to be discovered, even though by being incarnate, it is he who reveals himself to us, Jesus is immensely valuable beyond all measure because Jesus is God and offers us everlasting life to those who believe him. And yet he's not a treasure recognized by many. In fact, he himself, to the first owners of the field, is rejected by Israel. The nation of Israel in the time of Jesus are the ones who could be considered the owners of the field, 
They were the first to know him. He was theirs, but they refused to believe in his value. And so it brings to mind the scripture passage, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Our Lord Jesus is a treasure available to all who desire him, but he is unavailable to anyone who's not willing to die to themselves, take up their cross, and follow him. One should not fear of missing out or being tricked with this possible deal on a field or on a pearl. The great risk, the great cost, is having to die to oneself by allowing the treasure who is God to take possession of us. We purchase the field by allowing ourselves to be owned by God. Today's gospel then invites us, asks us to give everything that we have over to God to consider that everything that we have is also the Lord's. When we desire the treasure, to really have the treasure means that we recognize that we belong and have committed the totality of ourselves over to God. Years ago, I used to work with college students, and they would often ask me the question, Father Steve, what is it that God desires me to do? What's the best way, the fastest way, usually kind of parenthetically implied, What's the fastest way I can figure out what God wants me to do with my life? And I would say, it's very easy. There's no, well, apart from staying close to the Eucharist, going to confession regularly, staying close to the Lord in prayer, all you have to do is imagine yourself standing before the Lord, and there's a table standing between, between you and God. And all you have to do is imagine taking all the things out of your pockets, putting all on the table, everything that you've got, and not just the material things that you have, maybe the gifts and talents God's given you, maybe some of the dreams, some of the asp- inspirations, aspirations that you desire in your life, put all of it on the table. And tell the Lord that all of this, Lord, is yours. Take any of it. Take all of it. Hang on to it for as long as you want. Total surrender to the Lord. God can't work with that which we do not offer him. The treasure cannot inhabit, possess our lives unless we give the totality of our lives over to God. And it's very human for us, I know it is for me, sometimes to say, well, you know, there's that one thing I kind of have holding behind my back, or I kind of made sure that that little thing on the table was kind of covered up by that other thing. Because so often we think to ourselves, there's a few things here and there that I would like to keep for my own, for myself. And yet the Lord wants to work with the totality of our being. He wants, when we talk about the treasures, let's, let's be very direct here. We're talking about the treasure of his mercy here on earth. We're talking about the treasure of our understanding of divine truth that is true here on earth and eternally true in the beatific vision of heaven. We're also talking about being able to be united, even offering the totality of our being to the completeness of even our sufferings being offered to God, that he wants that too. He wants all of it. And isn't that extraordinary that when we offer our sufferings even to God, when we allow him to take possession of that, it can become a salvific act. God truly takes the bad. Who wants suffering, right? And yet when we allow Jesus, it doesn't mean it's easy. It's always easy to talk about redemptive suffering. It's always harder to have to live it. But when we talk about the being offered to Jesus, and something that we absolutely don't want, being transformed into the holy act of salvation, the salvation can be offered up for the salvation of others, certainly for our own salvation, that the totality in which God wants to possess us is, results in a more perfect union with his being. It is a foreshadowing of the, of the glory of heaven that we desire. There's the beautiful prayer that we say in front of the Eucharist, O sacred banquet, in which Christ becomes our food, The memory of his passion is celebrated. The soul here on earth is filled with grace, and the pledge of future glory is given to us. So if we want that, we got to surrender. we got to allow that pledge of future glory to dwell in our hearts. Allow Jesus and the Father to exert the claim that they made on us in baptism and confirmation. We were claimed for Christ in baptism, strengthened by the Holy Spirit in confirmation. Our souls were indelibly marked by God's grace as he claimed us as his. Mercy. And the other thing about what we also gain, the treasure here on earth, and 
Understandably, this is, we are in kind of one of those by installments, right? I mean, whoever, we're, we're invited to many dyings in our life, some of them quite colossal, some of them very small and incremental throughout our lives. And so, there's, so our desire for holiness doesn't, just doesn't happen, turn on a dime where we buy the field, we get the pearl. It's this ongoing conversion where we're kind of purchasing by installment. You know, as our, as our conversion broadens and deepens, our passion for the Lord and desire for him become clearer to be the center of our lives, and we are renewed in that because there can be some regression. We're renewed in that. What do we attain here? We attain freedom. To be true, truly free children of God because we're guided by divine charity. We're guided by divine truth. And so things that we see as obstacles or problems don't necessarily be, are, aren't necessarily them in the first place. Some of the things that we see as temptations, distractions, diminish and become less so in our lives. We purchase the field by allowing ourselves to be owned by God. What a deal we're offered today by our Lord. What possibilities here on earth. We may ask the Lord to help us, and isn't that interesting too, to make a more complete and perfect surrender, we need his grace to help us do even that. Lord, Help me surrender to you. Help me purchase this field. Bankroll me on this field. Help me purchase this field and this pearl with the help of your grace. For your greater glory here on earth and for my eternal life in heaven. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, and substantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
for the sick and suffering of the church, also mentioned the victims, to those who have asked for our prayers, and those for whom we promise to pray, we pray to the Lord. Lord for all those who have died, that one day they will be raised up to the fullness of heavenly life in Christ Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord for Ruby Bears, for whom this, this mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord for all who are in the Holy Family service and all the attention is before the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord God of all our refuge, we are turned to the prayers of your church and grant that we ask to do the same thing. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for when your children were scattered afar by sin, the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, May the body of Christ in the temple of the Holy Spirit might to the praise of your manifold, manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, he Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by setting down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, 
We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, O Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Andrew, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day forgive and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should have done for me, but only say the word in your soul. Behold, I st- bless the Lord of my soul and never forget all his benefits. A prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you.
Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A word from our sponsor. Oh. Okay. Um, well, that's no fun. Okay. So for communion, um, those who would wish to receive either on the tongue or in the hand will come to this side and receive from Father Steve. And those who would, would like to receive in the hand alone, please come to this side for me, Father Gregory. And after receiving our Lord's body, blood, soul, spirit, and divinity, please exit by the side, side entrances. Side exit. Um, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. See, I told you it would be better if we had a word from our sponsor. <laughs>